All right, it is finally 7 p.m. SGT time, and I'd like to thank everyone for joining us tonight. You know, we've got an interesting panel lined up for you guys, and I'd like to thank you guys for coming in and joining us tonight as we give you an insightful panel discussion as we navigate through the complexities and challenges surrounding real-world asset tokenization. Um, I will introduce our esteemed panelists shortly, um, but tonight they will be exploring various perspectives and shed light on the current landscape of RWA tokenization and the strides they're working on for the RWA industry, but more importantly, answering the question of what drives RWA adoption in a crypto bull market. So without further ado, let me introduce our first speaker tonight is, of course, CEO and co-founder of InvestX and IXSwap, Julian Kwan. We also have um, marketing operations head Bernie Buzaz for Unlocked. And co founder and CEO of Kima Finance, A10 Katz, and of course, head of investment banking and tokenization of Token X, one Rob Boontham. So, gentlemen, please, starting with Julian, why don't you give yourselves a bit of an introduction, introduce yourselves to the community tonight? Thanks, G and Jenny and team for putting on the uh, event today. Um, great to have everyone here. Uh, pretty good topic, I think. Um, we've had probably one of the biggest announcements in the history of the space uh, from BlackRock just recently, which is really helping all the platforms um, in the space and, and seems to be right on point um, as one of the major themes right now. Um, quick one from me. Uh, my name is Julian. I'm co-founder CEO of IXSwap. Uh, we built IXSwap. We started building IXSwap three years ago, um, back when the RWA space was called the STO space, the security token space. But the whole purpose was that um, we believe in a whole world of tokenization of assets and startups and real estate and private credit and debt and commodities and everything. Um, when that starts to kick off, you're going to start with thousands and then hundreds and then hundreds of thousands and millions of assets. Now, um, when we, we think about a world of like all these major assets out there, a very small percentage of these assets then uh, you would consider to be exchange traded products where you could go to like a, a real world asset exchange and you know find a market maker and get liquidity and all that kind of stuff. So we thought like, okay, well then then the super majority of these assets are gonna sit on listing boards. That that kind of like looks like the cryptocurrency market of 2017, 18, when all the DEXs had no liquidity and they just sat there like 10,000 altcoins, like someone come by me and just fingers crossed wait for someone to come back. So with that innovation in cryptocurrency, the automated market maker, the system that's behind Uniswap and PancakeSwap, everyone with two tokens in, in, in crypto could start their own liquidity pool. So, um, so, so we built IXSwap as the Uniswap for real world asset tokens. Anyone with any type of real world asset token, real estate startup can come to the platform and start their first liquidity pool and breathe life into the liquidity of that asset. And if we, and, and, and it differs with Uniswap because behind it, it's got securities license and custody licenses. But that's been the play, and we, we're, we're happy to share that with everyone here and welcome the other the speakers to the table. Thanks, Jim. All right. Thanks for the introduction, Julian. Up next is Bernie from Unlocked. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, um, everyone, for being here. Great opportunity to exchange ideas um, about the RWA space, especially now that the market's heating up. Um, I think... We are all very excited about what's coming. Um, I think it's it's a no-brainer to to be here now. Uh, it's the most exciting times in crypto, in my opinion. Um, and yeah, um, I've been with Luck for about two years now. Um, you know, overseeing marketing, business development, data systems, analytics, a bit of everything. Um, and it's been an incredible journey um, being part of of this team that's you know um, at the forefront of of blockchain innovation, especially here in in RWAs. Um, so Alok, it's right now the only permissionless RWA liquidity protocol, um, you know, powered by by AI, where users can participate as depositors, let's say, let's say lenders or borrowers who can take out loans, instant loans against your against your RWAs. Um, and we're launching mainnet tomorrow, by the way. So so yeah, it's it's a really exciting moment for us. And um, and the thing here, you know, it's that. RWAs right now represent the, let's say, the largest untapped market in, in DeFi, about you know, 16 trillion opportunity here. Um, yet liquidity remains constrained for, for most of those assets. 
Um, and these assets have been confined to institutions, to uh, create investors. Um, they've been gated by complexity, barriers to entry. If you want to take out a loan against um, you know, a piece of art or a Rolex or a trading card, you need to go through the hassle of the traditional markets and, and traditional finance uh, institutions. Um, but right now, uh, decentralized markets need decentralized and permissionless solutions. And that's why we are, we are building a lot from this, from this approach. Um, so really excited about sharing with you guys what we're building and, and, and talking about how all of these solutions can, can bring adoption to the RWA space and, and to the whole crypto market as, as well. Awesome. Thanks for that amazing introduction, Bernie. I'm passing over the mic to Aiton Katz, Kimo Finance CEO and co-founder. Thank you. And uh, thank you for having me here uh, tonight, today. Uh, so I'm Eitan, uh, co-founder and CEO uh, of Kima. Um, so I've been in the uh, crypto space for the past uh, 11 years, uh, in uh, various uh, cycles. Uh, but uh, like, uh, I guess everyone here, I'm uh, extremely excited by the uh, changes that uh, the, uh, the structural systematic changes that uh, we're seeing in the space now and the uh, RWA definitely is uh, something that uh, we've been talking about uh, for the past few years but uh, finally we are starting to see how this innovation is uh, uh, um, getting uh, realized. Uh, so Kima is uh, uh, an infrastructure uh, that enables uh, the uh, transfer of uh, messages and value across ecosystems. So uh, it's a thing you can think of it as a rail of rails. It's a blockchain based solution that enables the transfer of uh, uh, um, assets and, and messages uh, uh, and without using uh, uh, any smart contracts. So that uh, makes Schema uh, uniquely positioned uh, to be uh, a rail that doesn't have any vulnerabilities, uh, doesn't have any issues of uh, key management. It's a, a decentralized uh, uh, network uh, to move around assets. Uh, and uh, obviously um, in the RWA space, we are um, um, we're positioned uh, to, to play the role of uh, or the, that role that will replace the uh, intermediaries that today are needed to move around assets between ecosystems. So we see multiple platforms, multiple technological stacks, and uh, Kima is here to make the whole thing uh, um, smoothly uh, uh, transferable, um, regardless of the uh, chosen technological stack uh, to build uh, RWAs and uh, payment trails. All right, thanks for that, A10. Um, lastly, we have one Rob Boontham, head of investment banking and tokenization for TokenX. Hi, everybody. Uh, greetings from TokenX. Uh, my name is one Rob Boontham, or Atul. Uh, I'm leading like uh, investment banking and tokenization team here. Uh, from me personally, I've been in like a traditional investment banking for like more than 10 years and just stepped in this space for three or four years ago. And I believe uh, this is a very great way uh, to everyone to bullish on like a crypto or a digital token, something like that. Token X is a regulated ICO portal. We granted uh, the ICO portal license from the Thai SEC like uh, three years ago. Uh, I came here to set up uh, with my CEO and my some of my team, and yes, uh, we are uh, doing like end-to-end uh, tokenization, uh, tokenization solutions for the clients. Uh, in Thailand, we call it uh, the, the tokens can be spread into like an investment token or the STO or utility tokens, uh, and we are doing both uh, to serve the clients at the enterprise solution. And this is a brief uh, discussion about the token X here. Thank you. All right, thank you for the amazing introduction panelists. Now that we've given kind of a general introduction into what each platform is doing, I'd like us to kind of tackle the first question and allow the audience to get up to speed with what we are working on. 
on all the respective platforms. So jumping into the first question here, um, what are you working on right now and what specific problem are you solving or providing opportunities for? So I think we'll start with you, Julian, and then we'll go in the order of which you guys were introduced. Sorry, that last part just cut out. Jane, what was the most? Could you just repeat that? Yeah. So the first question is, what are you working on right now and what specific oh, problem are you yeah. solving or providing opportunities for? Yeah. So what we're working on right now is like we've been building one of the big challenges in RWA has been the products have been useful, but not very interesting. Tokenized treasuries, tokenized money, market funds. That's very useful for some participants in the ecosystem, but it's not interesting to a super majority of people in the crypto universe. So the latest products we've been working on are called on-chain tokenized portfolios. These are like super innovative and very excited. So essentially it's a tokenized fund. And instead of a traditional fund where you spend months to set it up, it costs you tens of thousands of dollars. You then spend a year or two to raise the money and then you would go and invest for, and then the investors usually get out in 15 to 17 years. That's the story of venture capital funds traditionally, right? Blockchain VCs usually gets shorter, but it's certainly a lot of that pain. So with our on-chain, on-chain tokenized portfolio, portfolios, we call them OTPs, we set these things up in 24 hours. It's a tokenized share. Then we launch it on an Ike swap. Investors who have KYC, which only takes a photo, it's not for accredited invest for everyone. All you have to do is show photo ID. So we, we're one of the very few platforms in the world in RWA that welcomes retail investors. And you can buy uh, a real world asset token in this funds and for a minimum of one USDT. Never happened before, right? Uh, in the, the history of RWA. That's the first exciting part. The second exciting part is that key opinion leaders, KOLs and influencers are leading these funds. So our first one's Coach K. He's a crypto trader, been in the space for 10 years, access to private deals, intel, inside information, all of the usual stuff in the space. He's putting together this OTP and we're doing it with him. And he's going to go invest in gaming tokens, game fire, everything related to gaming tokens. Um, and that's the second part that's super interesting. So instead of just watching these KOLs tweet about tokens they bought and sold and you're always getting the information when the price has changed, of course, you go in alongside the guys, right? So that's amazing. The third part that is the real kicker is as soon as the fundraising is over, which is typically a week or two, we create a liquidity pool on swap, and you can trade those RWAs. So you set up super quick, you're in investments you can't get into on your own and you're not stuck for 17 years, you're stuck for seven days. And we've now got these liquidity pools because that's the whole purpose of IX swap is this RWA DEX where you can create liquidity pools for RWA and you can trade them. So that's that's the latest product that we've, we've launched this week. Um, everyone can uh, get involved with it. And we've got a, a bunch of other ones coming out that are the different KOLs, um, you know, DPIN and AI and different types of focuses and, and a whole bunch of startups that are tokenizing their equity. So again, startups are typically invest cross your fingers for 10 or 20 years, usually not make anything happen or maybe get an exit. And our startups are going to be get in, invest, and a, you know, a day after funding finishes, you can trade them on, on IXWAP. So that's, uh, that's the latest and greatest from our side, Gene. All right. Thank you, Julian. Um, yeah, Bernie, I'm passing it over to you. Yeah, I love it. Love what you guys are building. Um, I think it's, it's, it's really useful and necessary. Um, so at, at Alok, we, we are currently focusing on something that, you know, it might seem straightforward, but it has the potential to significantly impact how we interact with um, real world assets in general, which is unlocking the liquidity they, they have. Because, you know, in our opinion, bringing our RWAs on chain, it's, it's, it's cool. It's, it's the first step, the, the first um, necessary step in bridging this, this gap between traditional finance and, and DeFi. But the real magic happens here when we unlock the liquidity of these new assets. So that's where we're putting our energy right now. And we think the, the opportunity here is, is massive, right? Um, RWAs have, you know, historically, they have been locked up in, in a system that's hard to access. And, and it's even harder to, to move around. So what we're doing right now is we are building a layer of finance on top of this new asset class to make them really financially useful let's say so so we are the first 
permissionless RWA back lending protocol. Um, so you can just go to the go to the product, take out a loan against any asset. Um, well, in the future, it's going to be any RWA. Right now, we're focusing on on, on collectibles, um, gold, diamonds, sneakers, these kind of you know assets that are uh, easier to appraise. Um, but the good thing here and and and, and the, the innovative thing here is we have no banks, we have no middlemen, we have no red tape. It's permissionless. You just need to go there, and in a matter of five minutes, you can take out a loan against any tokenized asset. So, so we are turning what once was um, a complicated and, and really exclusive process into something that's <clears throat> now it's straightforward, it's it's accessible, and within it's generally useful um, for for all RWA users and in the future for general crypto users that want to diversify their portfolio and you know they want to do different things with that uh with those assets they don't want to purchase those assets and lock the liquidity or lock their capital or have the opportunity cost of of not doing um different things in a bull market so now they can they can buy those tokenized assets they can take out a loan against them and they can do whatever they want with that um with that extra capital um so yeah that's basically what we're doing um we are the safest and the most secure and cost-effective way to do this uh, because again we have no middlemen everything is permissionless uh, we have a peer to pool model so we don't have the traditional um nft lending model which is a peer to peer in which you need to wait for a lender to agree on the terms um often predatory terms because you need the liquidity you need the funds so so you agree to whatever they offer you no we have here um or custom risk framework or mathematical models based on AI that provide the most accurate brand appraisal for your asset and then provide a loan to value so you can take out a fair loan and you can repay on your own terms with low interest rate um, and against any asset class that's that's going to be tokenized in the future. Um, so really excited about what you guys are building because that's the foundation uh, upon which we can build um, our lending and borrowing system. Great stuff, Brady. Thanks for sharing that. Um, passing it over to you, A10. Yeah, so <clears throat> uh, we're now focusing on building uh, our uh, core chain. Uh, so Kima is a proof of stake chain and uh, we're now uh, uh, finalizing uh, uh, the uh, testnet. Uh, getting prepared for the uh, mainnet launch. And once uh, uh, um, the mainnet is launched and uh, also while working with our uh, beta customers on, on testnet, we're building uh, a solution uh, to enable uh, one of the uh, pain points uh, of uh, tokenized assets and uh, assets in, in, in general. And that is uh, the uh, distribution or enabling uh, from a technological perspective, enabling uh, the uh, DVP, the delivery versus payment uh, part. So after the token is issued, um, now it's time to make sure that it's uh, it's mobile. It's mobile. It can be uh, moved. It can be uh, uh, sold. So uh, the DVP part uh, is uh, a complex. Uh, and, and uh, in many cases, risky process. And uh, the innovation that we bring here is to provide a, uh, a deliver versus payment process that doesn't require any intermediaries. What that means is that the uh, payer um, and the token owner, the asset owner, uh, they swap uh, their one is sending out the payment, the other is sending out the token, but uh, there is no need for an escrow, there's no need for a trusted third party to enable the transaction. So uh, Kima, the Kima as a blockchain functions as this uh, escrow, as this trusted uh, uh, intermediary without the intermediary. So we actually realized the uh, promise of a blockchain to remove intermediaries using cryptography and uh, mathematical um, algorithms to enable one atomic swap where the uh, 
tokenized asset and the payment, uh, they exchange hands in one transaction. So that's uh, um, the innovation that we bring to the market. And moreover, these, uh, these swaps are completely asset and the chain agnostic. So the payment could be on in one ecosystem, the tokenized asset can be in another. Um, and uh, the real uh, nice part here is the fact that we can also work with the traditional banking system. So essentially, we can do an on-chain settlement of a, a DVP transaction uh, that involves a fiat. So that opens the floodgates uh, to uh, liquidity levels uh, that uh, are unprecedented because now uh, anyone with uh, a, a bank account or credit card can uh, can purchase an asset without going through the uh, the, the friction uh, of getting into an on-chain asset to be able to pay for a tokenized asset. Kima as the uh, uh, um, this interoperability layer can uh, put this all as uh, something of the past and enable these uh, uh, peer to peer transactions. Amazing stuff happening over there at Kima A10. Um, lastly, we have one Rob from TokenX. Yes, thank you. Uh, TokenX is a tokenization platform, and we have uh, our own blockchain, which is uh, EVM compatible. Um, however, uh, our business model is quite different because uh, the first one, uh, we are under this, uh, we, we are like a subsidiary company of the Seiya Commercial Bank, who is a financial institution in Thailand. Uh, that's why uh, we are regulated by for both the Thai SEC and Thai Bank of Thailand. Uh, second one, uh, we are assisting the clients to do like an end-to-end -end tokenization and fundraising. Uh, and you know, in Thailand, uh, when you would like to do like a public offering for the tokens, uh, it needs or requires the SEC approval. So our, so our solution is to like a sourcing for the good use case uh, for the RWAs, for the tokenization. Uh, we have the clients to structuring uh, to make sure the structure to issue the tokens uh, are legally and commercial uh, and, and meet the commercial wise. Uh, also, we assist them and coordinate it with the parties to do the due diligence on, on, on other perspective, like a legal and tax. Also, we have a technology team to assist uh, the clients in development of the smart contracts, uh, utility features, or something like that. And uh, we help them also to develop the white paper and prepare for the case submission to the SEC. Uh, we need to align with the Thai SEC and other government bodies to make sure that uh, our case is perfect to do the public offering, which means uh, it takes quite a long time to, 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 to have a tokenization project. And the last one, uh, we uh, assist our client to do the placement. Uh, we design the placement strategy for our clients, for our, uh, uh, the company of the corporate who would like to do the tokenization and facilitate them for a token listing in for port, uh, like a sex or uh, centralized exchange and decentralized exchange and monitor them as per the regulations required. Yeah, and that's about the token X and what we are doing. Thank you. All right. Thanks for the great updates. And as everyone has been listening here, you know, it's interesting to see a lot of where our panelists are coming from and which aspect of the RW space that they're building in. Jumping into the second question, I think a lot would argue, but we could all definitely agree that it is the start of the bull market. So my next question for all the panelists here is how does this recent crypto bull run reflect on the demand for RWA tokenization and what implications do you guys think it would have for the future? I'll stick to the uh, I'll stick to the um, the schedule here. So I'll, let me jump in first. I think Bitcoin has always driven everything related to real world asset tokens up until about you know a year ago. 
Um, since 2018, the price of Bitcoin drove everything. Um, in term affected everything, everyone's perception. People used to think we were we were Bitcoin real estate, or it was so everyone was so confused. So that's changing as the market gets much bigger and there's many more tokens, but it's still very much true. Um, and it's the king of you know the space. And I haven't checked lately. I think it's over fifty percent of the market cap still. Uh, and the reason I bring that up is because Bitcoin ETFs are kind of a, a monumental. Um, um, change to the funding environments because now everyone can buy Bitcoin in their interactive brokers account, Robinhood account. So it's super easy, super fast. Don't have to worry about private keys, losing big, don't even have to care about how it works. Um, and you can buy it for $15, I think, um, 15 or $25 is the shares of these ETFs. So they've, they've packaged it up. They've made it super easy. Therefore, the belief is, and we're seeing this, these are the most successful ETFs in the, launched in the history of the world. Capital's flowing and it's just getting started. The ETF companies, you know, the Black Rocks and what they haven't even trained up most of their salespeople to even explain this to the larger audience. So what I think it all means in a nutshell is that huge money is going to flow to Bitcoin. It'll overflow to Ethereum, Solana, into the altcoins. And naturally, then you're creating a lot more um, v- um, value into the whole space. That means there's going to be, you know, essentially more money put in and more use case for stable coins. It's going to be um, more real world asset tokens launched as well. So ultimately it's just one huge positive um, element. And even though, you know, Bitcoin essentially, whether you believe it's money or not, it's a payment coin, whereas a real world asset token is a share of a building, even though that's two very different things, it dramatically affects it in a positive and negative way, which is why, and, and, you know, even now today, this week, uh, you know, Bitcoin's back on the rise and, and so uh, every other token, <laughs> most other tokens. And then we've had this big surge because BlackRock's ETFs be hugely beneficial for Bitcoin. BlackRock's RWA, same, same. Um, and maybe even bigger. So that's my take on it, Gene. Yep, go ahead, Bernie. Yeah, completely, completely agree. We we are so bad, right? <laughs> so, so yeah, I think I think again this this um this beginning of the bull market of this surge in interest <clears throat> isn't just about the rising value of the crypto industry as well. It's which it is of course, but it's also you know highlighting the broader potential of blockchain technology that can now transform traditional financial markets and therefore on board more traditional retail investors. So, so I think that for a proper bull market to keep skyrocketing, um, we do need an influx of external investors. And this cycle, many of them may not be your typical um, Digen or savvy DeFi user, right? Um, I think these, these new users that are um, steadily coming in um, they are um, increasingly interested in, uh, let's say, diversifying their crypto holdings, um, not only on, you know, the um, Bitcoin, Ethereum and, and altcoins, but also with assets that have this this tangible, this, this real world value and that can provide a kind of buffer against the, the volatility that's, you know, typically associated with, with crypto. Because again, we are, we are looking at investors that are not used to this volatility that they know that crypto is a good market but they are entering now for the first time um so i i also think that um of course the tokenization of of rwas um lowers uh, these entry barriers and it makes investment in assets like like real estate art um even commodities more accessible to this broader audience um that will now un- start understanding the real value and, and and the real efficiency of of blockchain right because if you if you take out of the picture um you know what's what's being the crypto ethos or or decentralized ideas until now many outsiders may think okay this is just speculation um and all those things but right now they can um they can really understand that blockchain technology is making traditional finance model more efficient and more fair and more accessible and i think that's going to be one of the catalysts um of the bull market keeping skyrocketing um but again i, I think the 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 obvious conclusion here is that 
this increased tokenization of RWAs will likely drive the evolution of regulatory frameworks that need to accommodate and, and need to govern these new forms of, of investment, right? Um, which at the end of the day, I think it's it's a natural path for crypto markets and the thing that we that we all need right now. So I think this is going to be one of the main pivotal factors that's going to allow regulation, good regulation. Um, let's let's pray for good regulation um, to come to crypto and and make the industry more attractive for external um, non crypto native investors. Yeah. So. Uh, so I, I, I totally agree with uh, everything that was said uh, before me. Um, I, I just want to add that the the uh, angle of uh, uh, the the uh, vectors that create uh, interest. Uh, so obviously, uh, a bull market is is one vector uh, because uh, the the mass media, the mainstream media, is starting to talk, and uh, the Bitcoin price becomes an item. In the uh, mainstream news, so everyone uh, and we've seen it. Uh, those who were around uh, in previous cycles, we've seen it before in uh, 2021, 2017, 2013. Um, so that's definitely one catalyst for interest from uh, not just the public, but uh, also uh, 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 professional investors and uh, others that they tend to come back to these asset classes. Uh, when uh, we ha we are in a risk on environment and that uh, 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 is added to the other catalysts uh, regulation as, as was said here is uh, uh, or clarity in regulation the things that we see in europe and uh, uh, to some extent uh, in other places um, create clarity uh, and uh, if you add that to the uh, general public interest um, as well as uh, uh, macroeconomic drivers uh, of adoption uh, uh, that we see in uh, places like in uh, Africa and, and, and South America uh, and uh, the uh, national currencies that push uh, people to adopt cryptocurrencies and digital assets. So I think that the, this bull market is uh, uh, just uh, a major catalyst that is being added to the others and uh, therefore we see uh, uh, increased interest in uh, RWAs as well. All right, thanks for that, Aitan. Yeah, one, Rob, if there's anything you'd like to add to that. Yes, uh, I just would like to add up a little bit because uh, I totally agree with you guys on this catalyst. Uh, uh, the event uh, Happens for tokenization, like a, uh, of the real world assets or RWA. Uh, we we believe it is a growing sector, and this is like an intersection of the digital asset and traditional finance as well. So uh, we would like to discuss in two factors. The first one is the, the buy side that will be definitely uh, onboarding uh, the demands from the traditional investors, and of course that we will uh, create a more catalyst. To, to the other digital asset market. But uh, in the supply side, it's quite interesting because uh, the, the products of RWA that people are talking is like a treasury tokenization, it's like a private credit. But I believe in the next one and two years, there will be uh, any more uh, like a alternative assets to be tokenization. Like have, we have seen for five or six years past, like a, a carbon credits, or ESG teams, uh, apart from real estate, we have like a, a, a infrastructure tokenization, uh, which is quite huge. And also uh, in Thailand, we have like a, we, we, uh, our government have been promoting uh, a soft power team uh, to to integrate uh, to to interlink with uh, the digital assets. I think there will be many more asset class in the RWA uh, in the next one, two, or three years ahead. Thank you. All right. Interesting touch points there. You know, I heard about regulations and catalysts and definitely BlackRock. I think that's definitely one of the narratives that everyone's been hot about recently. So jumping to the third question here, you know, with BlackRock's recent fund tokenization launch in Ethereum, there seems to be a growing interest from the institutional side, I guess, in the Artaway space. And it seems to be growing. So 
Uh, my next question is for the panelists is what are your thoughts on this? So your, your question is what are we thought, what are the thoughts on BlackRock's movements? What are our thoughts on institutional interests in RWA space? Ah, um, there was always going to be institutional interest from RWA because real world assets come from the TradFi world. So there's no um, surprises that the TradFi guys are, are heating up. Um, it should be easier for TradFi world to understand real world assets than cryptocurrency because that's what they do, securities. Um, What's interesting, I think, is that, um, you know, Bitcoin and crypto started first. So um, we kind of, the, the real world asset started second, um, although it should be easy to understand and it hasn't been, or it's just been a lot of friction. Um, the TradFi guys are really doing it for efficiencies. So if you think about, if I boil it down to why Franklin Templeton and BlackRock wants a tokenized treasury um, offering, um, there's efficiencies there. They can save them a lot of money. That's one thing uh, versus paper-based assets. The other thing is there's, there's a lot you can do with this. So um, JP Morgan has a platform called Onyx and it tokenizes um, publicly traded assets um, for, for JP Morgan's assets, for JP Morgan's investors. And the reason they do that is because a lot of assets, even publicly traded assets are not very usable or they're very, um, they're very challenged in, you know, being able to lend on them and borrow on them. So the tokenized format brings a multi-dimensional use case to these assets. And yeah, they're not even looking at private markets and they're not even talking about cryptocurrency uh, related to this topic. So, so my, my point is that there's all these, this is very, very different use case for whoever's investing into the, the, the real world assets. And for TradFi, it's, it's really about, you know, saving money and then creating more use cases and trying to make money. The other side of the sort of the bifurcated market, which I think where I swap sits in, which is the private markets. And for those that don't know, private markets being my startup, Gene's real estate company, um, you know, whatever, ANS VC fund, anything's not publicly listed. Those private markets multiple times, eight to 10 times bigger than the public markets. It's just that they're on paper and no one can see them and therefore no one really thinks about it. So we're attacking that private market um, industry and bringing the technology and the use case to all of those assets. So it's a huge blue ocean of trillions of dollars of assets. It's marrying this new technology with this existing marketplace. And therefore there'll be this kind of exponential growth of value. And we're doing it for many reasons. We're doing it because it's more efficient. We're doing it because um, it brings new innovative products. We're doing it because you can make these assets then tradable and then maybe you can lend on them and you can borrow them. You might be able to take them to the IXWAP AMM and create a liquidity pool. Um, and there's sort of five or six major reasons why um, you've got the private markets now sort of adopting this, but everything that the TradFi guys do and the BlackRock guys does it essentially is, is a positive um, upside to the whole kind of RWA space. There's more capital coming in and it's more uh, better looking products and they can still be, the, pro the public products that no one else cares about except BlackRock. But again, you can see what <laughs> you can see what the, the news last week did when BlackRock said they're tokenizing a, a fund on Ethereum and the whole space just gets lit up. So um, it's all it's all that they might take some of it. Yeah, yeah, completely, completely agree. Uh, absolutely, these these move by BlackRock. Um, I think it's it's quite a nod towards the the actual viability and you know potential of blockchain technology in TradFi. And and as Julian just said, these these guys are starting to realize that there's efficiency um in what they're already doing if they do it in blockchain. Um, so so in my opinion I think this this movement and, and the ones that are about to come for sure um, they are a clear signal that institutional interest in RWA is not just a let's say passing trend or something that's gonna pump the market, uh, but it's um, a strategic direction, right? Um, so th this this development, in my opinion, is absolutely key um, because again, it, it brings a new level of credibility and, and attention to to the crypto space, and I think this can of course accelerate general adoption, innovation, and and possibly. Even regulatory clarity, at least, at least I hope uh, it happens in, in the good way, right? Um, so, so yeah, I think I think it's exciting to see such big players um, recognizing now the benefits of blockchain 
um, again, for transparency, for um, efficiency, accessibility, um, in, in managing and, and, and investing and, and dealing with these real world assets that, that again, it's it's already their game. So, so they are just realizing that it, this is the way, the efficient and accessible way of doing things. Um, so yeah, I agree that this could well be a tipping point um, for this broader institutional embrace of, of crypto. Um, not only as a, again as a speculative assets or a, a, as a market in which um, big gains can be can be done, uh, which is it is of course, but as a legitimate and, and, and a valuable tool in the general TradFi financial toolkit, let's say. Um, so yeah, really excited about about what's coming for sure. Yeah, and, and again, I, I, I totally agree. Um, and BlackRock is definitely. Uh, uh, a catalyst. Uh, we have to remember that uh, some of the institutions uh, are already in this space for several years. Uh, JP Morgan, uh, they, they didn't just, uh, um, uh, that, that's not their uh, uh, first time that uh, they're doing experiments uh, and uh, actually Onyx and some other experiments uh, uh, have been worked on for uh, the past few years. Uh, and and uh, we we know that uh, Franklin Templeton and uh, Societe Generale and uh, some others that uh, already announced uh, some initiatives. Uh, uh, we know that uh, uh, central banks are doing uh, experiments with uh, some central bank digital currencies. Uh, so um, we see um, these, these uh, experiments, these POCs taking place for the past uh, a uh, few years, but uh, the, in my mind, what's different now is that it seems that we're crossing or we were going beyond the tipping point. So uh, now that uh, everyone talked in theory about the efficiencies, um, we were starting to see uh, numbers around those efficiencies. Uh, so now everyone understands that what used to be a T plus four uh, uh, um, transaction, something that involved uh, uh, various intermediaries and took four business days, can now be done uh, uh, immediately. So we're talking about T plus zero instantaneous transactions in, in the space. Now that increases volume, increases potential uh, 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 income, obviously, and it can be translated to uh, numbers. So uh, the uh, BlackRock announcement uh, is, is maybe uh, something that really changed uh, um, uh, something uh, if we will maybe historically we will look back and say, okay, this is the tipping point, uh, but uh, the efficiencies are definitely there. These people understand it uh, for some time. Uh, they were playing with it like a toy, but it seems that uh, with clarity, uh, in in the uh, 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 regulatory space and uh, some signs from uh, the SEC with the ETF and uh, BlackRock uh, going uh, all in into the space. So uh, this is a snowball that now everyone realizes that it's not a matter of uh, if but when and uh, they cannot just uh, be left behind. So. Uh, that what uh, picks uh, a lot of interest, uh, not only from the uh, JP Morgans and the city banks of the world, but also from smaller institutions, uh, and uh, including hedge funds and uh, family offices. So uh, I think uh, uh, we're now beyond the, the tipping point. Yeah, I completely agree with you guys again. And I think uh, there are many financial institutions, a big ones like EBS, JP Morgan, like Ethan said, uh, we have seen uh, they do like experiment. For example, I'm familiar with the project uh, Guardian uh, in Singapore, but uh, it tends to like uh, more in uh, operational improvement uh, rather than uh, create the funds for, uh, like BlackRock doing now. I think, uh, what the BlackRock is doing is quite a good strategic movement, uh, which will create like a credibility and onboard the traditional demands 
uh, for the investors. And I believe, like uh, many institution players, uh, we will we, we, we like this uh, in, in the near future. And of course, I have mentioned uh, from the last uh, question, I think that's time for the alternative assets tokenization uh, rather than uh, normal uh, current RWA products. I think uh, many uh, issuers or many asset holders will try to uh, create more RWAs uh, in, 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 in terms of uh, specific assets, I mean more alternative specific assets or projects to be tokenized. Thank you. All right, thanks for that wonderful insights, panelists. So I, now that we've kind of discussed, you know, the specifics and different problems that we're tackling on each platform, um, the recent or the upcoming bull market and bull run, and how institutional interest is all playing into this, um, I'd like for the panelists to probably share a bit more detail about some of the growth that some of your RWA assets are experiencing on your platform right now, and probably what value are they currently offering or bringing into the market? Um, <clears throat> so, um, I guess we, you're talking about the different types of assets, Gene? Yeah. Yeah. If they're experiencing any growth from the sudden surge of interest from, um, RWA space. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, everyone's benefiting from, you know, this recent, I mean, we, it was only a couple of months ago that there was, there was like a, a kind of excitement around RWA and then it got washed out by meme coins for a couple of weeks as did everything. And now it's come back again. So. I expect it to kind of ebb and flow. What's interesting about, or what I think is different about RWA and other assets, not not really pure crypto, but you know, memes and NFTs and all that kind of stuff. I think that um, all of that's fantastic, super innovative. You know, different ways to own different, you know, bits, uh, parts of culture, whatever. But RWA is 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 being a slower beast to get off the ground because um, we're talking about real world assets. But essentially, it's not gonna. It's not a passing fad. It's not gonna. It's not going to come and go and then, you know, disappear and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's just, you know, growing every day. So I think ultimately it's, uh, it's beneficial. Everyone on the, the, the AMN here should be, you know, like everything. The only way to learn is to, you know, register, get set up on platforms, buy a few things. If they're trying to make it look like they're, um, you know, a lot of platforms are pushing hard to, you know, um, offer very small minimum investments like an IX wallet, one USDT. And get your hands dirty and learn. And it's just like learning about NFTs or learning about cryptocurrency or layer twos or ordinals or whatever, BRC, um, you know, NFTs. And um, start to work out like what's working, what are the different types of assets, you know, how they're being valued, what, what you know, you like investing in, what different types of platforms. So, yeah, all of that, I think, is very positive for this. Yeah, on, on our side, the reality is that we've been, um, you know, on testnet for the last um, for the last month, and we are launching mainnet tomorrow. So tomorrow we will see uh, about the about the adoption. Um, the thing is, uh, you know, protocol is a bit particular because we don't tokenize the assets, so we work with these um, tokenization partners uh, that are critical and essential for us. Um, so starting from tomorrow, we will be supporting um, collectibles, uh, for example, trading cards and um, watches. Uh, so you can, you know, go to one of our partners, tokenize your watch or buy a tokenized watch or a tokenized trading card. And then you can go to a log um, and take out a loan against that asset. Um, but our goal and our mission is to become completely asset agnostic. That's why uh, we're trying to partner up with all the leading RWA protocols uh, right now, especially with, uh, you know, tokenizing projects, but we want to integrate a lot of liquidity solutions into the whole ecosystem. Um, and we want to offer the possibility to users to tokenize, um, I mean, sorry, to take out a loan against any tokenized um, asset. So in the future, we want to want to support, for example, sneakers, uh, diamonds, precious metals, um, and an array of assets that's going to grow as the market grows. So we're really excited uh, about the you know the potential the the, the potential growth of, of the industry, and we're always on the lookout for these 
new uh, and interesting projects like you guys uh, that help these um, help bring in those assets on chain. So then we can support them in order to create that financial layer on top of them. So so yeah, we're really excited about what's going to happen starting from tomorrow. We're launching our mainnet and and let's see what this uh, what this brings us. Yeah, so uh, that's uh, uh, we're in a similar position. We're also on testnet, and um, but uh, if I have to judge by the interest that by the interest that uh, I'm seeing from our um, beta users and uh, potential partners, uh, so um, it's um, I, I couldn't say that there is one type of asset that uh, we see more than the others. We see uh, uh, we're talking with platform issuing platforms that do real estate we're talking with issuing platforms that uh, are doing uh, um, um, financial assets uh, uh, including bonds and uh, and stocks um, so I, I yeah I, I at least from my very narrow perspective uh, I, I cannot say that uh, we see one asset over the other uh, we see the interest uh, uh, um, from uh, across the board from all uh, type of uh, asset classes and being a, a, an asset agnostic uh, platform uh, we obviously welcome all but uh, um, I guess that uh, uh, the interest is uh, across the board yeah for us a token X uh, we are quite uh, heavily regulated by the Thai SEC and Thai uh, BOT, as mentioned earlier. And uh, we have just set up our platform like three years ago. So the transaction flow is quite not uh, organic, uh, but uh, trying to do like a huge uh, fundraising or the huge ICO. Like for example, uh, last year, uh, we closed the deal of the ICO uh, for like a 17 million USD for the fundraising. Uh, it, it, it's called real X or the real estate uh, back ICO in type of condominium. Uh, in, in terms of bull run of this year and thereafter, we try to uh, double or triple like a fundraising size on our platform. And we are trying to capture trends uh, that uh, we create like the alpha or the investors, uh, for example. Uh, about the ESG and carbon credits in Thailand, uh, it, it, it's quite new and we, we are the voluntary market. So there's some room of the improvement and there's some room of the price increase in the future for the carbon credits generated in Thailand. That's uh, the one thing that we are focusing. And the second one, uh, there is like uh, many infrastructure, good infrastructure in Thailand, for example, like a public transportation, like a, a tolls, like a a management system, something like that, uh, which is required to uh, use a, a huge capital investment. We are trying to do like a fundraising, uh, having the ICO in some tracks. Uh, and next, we are trying to do uh, more about the small assets tokenization, like diamonds, like a luxury assets, like a tokenized fund and bond, uh, subject to uh, a lot of regulations uh, in the few years. All right, thanks for that, panelists. Now, I think we're almost hitting the uh, one hour mark here. So we're now jumping into the last question. And you know, it, the title of this uh, panel is what drives RW, RWA adoption of crypto bull market? So it just makes sense that our last question is, are there any specific challenges that, are, that you or your platform or and, you know, everyone that in your team are facing for RWA adoption? And are there any ways that you are currently addressing them? Yeah, um, well, Gene, you know, you, you work with us. I think I think the key challenge right now is is um, there's a basic level of KYC required on any centralized exchange these days, and some of it's actually quite serious. Um, decentralized exchanges for crypto still allow people to plug in a wallet, and that's the end. That that's as much work as you have to do. Um, in certain parts of the world, that's not going to be work anymore. Um, I think US, EU, they've got issues with that system. So I think the trick and the main challenge we have right now is 
explaining and showing the the crypto community that you know you do have to do a super basic level of KYC because you're buying a share of someone's company or or a, a real estate project and they must know who you are. We've got the absolute most basic crypto, uh, sorry KYC than you can possibly have. And obviously, some people get upset or get angry about it, but it's just the way of the world. So when you're buying, you know, cryptocurrencies from groups that allow anyone to buy it, and um, you know, they don't care where it goes, and it doesn't matter where it goes, um, you know, real world assets are different, and and the onus is really on the the guys who are running the project or selling the shares or running the real estate fund or whatever it is or running the startup and they've sold shares in it. So it's just a basic thing that has to happen. And I think that's the biggest challenge for us right now is just explaining to the, the DGENs communities that you have to do this or you can't come in and it's very basic and it doesn't get any more basic than this. And, you know, over time they'll become, some of them will become better investors. They'll make a lot more money. They'll start investing into other, you know, real assets, token or not. They'll realize that, they'll realize looking back that this was as easy as it got. And as you go to become an accredited investor, an institutional investor, the onboarding and the KYC and all of that becomes much more onerous. So that's my two cents. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. I completely agree with, with that take. The KYC, it's going to be something that we're going to need to educate the community on. Again, again they, they need to understand that this is, um, you know, orders of magnitude under what uh, accredit investors and, you know, red tape and other regulations um make people need to need to do uh for us uh we wanted to simplify things that's why uh as we are not the ones tokenizing or the ones allowing you to claim the physical assets we decided to go in the permissionless way so we do not require kyc but again users need to understand that n now that we are integrating tradfi into our ecosystem which is a good thing because we need um we need the expertise we need the capital we need to you know um the the regulatory framework so we need to try to make the pieces stick together um and and we need things like kyc in order to uh, as the entry point for example for those for those tokenized assets or if you want to claim the physical asset that 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 backs these uh these tokens um for us we've we've found a challenge in this integrating track fee with with blockchain technology because we are used here in blockchain um which is something that i think we don't value enough from what we have which is that everything is mostly accurate it's precise data flows smoothly uh we have smart contracts the technology is built for things to work as they should and that's something that we're taking from granted because many of us are for example crypto natives and 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 when we are exposed to um how for example data systems or data feeds work outside crypto um we start getting a bit terrified and that's one of the challenges that we're having right now right so we need for example as we want to be asset agnostic and the reason why we don't support every potential asset class from the beginning is that we need to make sure that we're able to appraise each asset individually accurately and then we're able to liquidate it because we as again as we are not a peer-to-peer -peer model we are peer-to-pool model there's um there's a lender's stake um there's capital that's uh you know in liquidity pools so we need to be very precise and we're having these these challenges these these issues in bringing that off-chain data um again we have oracles we have different things but the source of the data those price feeds um it's been difficult to harmonize with blockchain systems and that's that's our main focus point right now um because it's the first time for example to bring um, let's say Pokemon cards price data into the blockchain. So no one has done this before. And, and you go to those price providers, to those web two, let's say price providers, and you see the data, you see, okay, here we have a problem. We need to integrate this with our system because we have an array of different tokenizing partners that has, um, you know, they provide the metadata for those tokens in a different way. So there's, there's data challenges that we need to solve in order to have an harmonized ecosystem but i think we will get to that point it's 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 just a matter of time a matter of developing the right technology um again we we need very smooth systems to incorporate to our ai frameworks and um, and that's a natural evolution of the crypto space right we, we need to get things fed by good reliable data and we need to build a technology to do so 
So, so yeah, for us, this is one of the technological challenges that it's going to need to be solved before mass adoption comes in and say, okay, these guys are doing things properly because things work as they should do, which has been the standard in Web3, but now we need to harmonize it with, you know, things coming from Web2 and, and, and off-chain technology providers. So, uh, uh with Kima, we, we uh, are taking out uh, the burden of uh, the uh, diversity in various uh, technological stacks and make this whole thing abstract. So uh, one of the challenges, obviously, is the fact that uh, we were providing a, a, a universal solution for any type of ecosystem, any chain, and also any jurisdiction. So um, th that, that creates a... a a challenge uh, both from the uh, regulatory perspective and the technical perspective uh, so and and also security so uh, from a regulatory point of view since uh, we are also connecting the banking system so we work um one jurisdiction at a time we we partner with uh, banking partners that provide us the connectivity to the banking system um with uh, the proper licensing uh, so that is a, uh, a challenge that is relatively easy to, to handle, uh, but uh, from a per an operational perspective, obviously, we need to work uh, at every jurisdiction and uh, make sure that uh, our technological solution doesn't uh, um, create any regulatory risk for the users. Um, the uh, the other thing is the uh, the other side of the the room is the crypto side where uh, we uh, also facilitate uh, um, transactions coming out of wallets. So we we have integrated uh, a solution that checks uh, does the KYT part. Uh, so we check the uh, uh, wallet addresses uh, dynamically to make sure that uh, no. Uh, uh, wallet that participates in the transactions uh, is a part of any type of uh, an illicit uh, activity. Uh, so, we, we are, the solution uh, to to the, these uh, diversity in all these aspects uh, is a combination of uh, uh, partners as well as uh, technology. Um, um, but uh, overall, uh, once we we get this network of uh, partners. Uh, and uh, um, we, we think that uh, by the time we, we will have a main it, uh, this, this, uh, this diversity in regulation, in, in uh, the technological stack, uh, and the security needs uh, will all be uh, uh, solved. Okay, for us, uh, I would like to uh, address the three issues about the challenge. The first one is like, uh, we are from a traditional banking, right? So uh, we need to educate uh, our clients about the RW adoption and also the crypto uh, asset adoption also, because uh, our uh, network or our clients are quite familiar with the traditional products. So in Thailand, we need to create the demand by give them education and it may need sometimes because uh, in Thailand, we have uh, only three regulated uh, ICO during the past three years. The second one is a uh, regulatory framework. Uh, in Thailand, there are some boundaries between the securities and digital assets. Uh, for now, uh, digital assets uh, include all about the cryptocurrencies and tokens. Uh, that is the same categories. So uh, that's why we never seen bond tokenization we never seen uh, trade Jewish tokenization, deposit tokenization in Thailand because uh, it's still prohibited and it still takes sometimes like two years to move uh, the investment tokens and all related matters to the securities like other countries. And the last one is the taxation uh, in Thailand about the digital assets. Uh, the taxation uh, for the investors, especially. It, 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 it is still quite not good comparing to traditional ones. For example, if you are the individuals uh, in Thailand and you invest in stocks, when you have a uh, capital gain, uh, you don't need to pay a capital gain tax in Thailand. But uh, uh, for digital assets, including the cryptocurrency, uh, 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 Bitcoin, for example, and tokens, 
uh, it's subject to like a 15% withholding tax and the capital gain tax must be uh, used to calculate it uh, and report as a final tax to the revenue department. Uh, the taxation in Thailand is still need to be improved uh, for in, in, our, in, our, in our perspective. Uh, that, that, that we would uh, make the digital access or tokenization will be more uh, competitive uh, than other products. All right, we're just about hitting over the uh, one hour mark here. And, you know, I'd like to thank all the panelists for joining us today. Right before we wrap up, I'd like the panelists to at least excite the audience with some news or teasers or upcoming events on their platforms and projects. So panelists, please share something with the community before we wrap this up for tonight. Thanks, Gene. Um, appreciate you putting this on and thanks for everyone who stayed around. Hope you guys learned some stuff today. Um, yeah, latest latest uh, product we've got launching is these tokenized on-chain tokenized portfolios. Coach K um, is going to be leading it. He's going to be investing in all these exciting GameFi tokens. You can buy it on IXSwap today. You just need to register basic register. You can pay a minimum of one USDT. That is um, the most exciting thing I've got going today. And you know, it looks like we might have a a new. Um, exchange listing for our token coming down the pipeline very soon. Um, that's it, Gene. Pass it to you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you guys for this um, amazing AME session. Uh, it's been great to discuss ideas with you all. And I hope that uh, everyone learned um, as much as I learned today from you. Um, here at Alert, as I said before, we're launching our mainnet tomorrow. So it's a really exciting moment for us. We've been We've been um, doing our testnet for more than a month. More than 600 users help us, um, you know, smooth out and iron out the details of the UI, of the protocol. And now we are ready to support collectibles um, as collateral for loans. In the future, uh, real estate and financial assets will come. Right now, we are going to be focusing on watches and trading cards, um, working with some tokenizing partners. So if you are ready to, you know, start your financial venture in real world assets, not just by buying one of these assets, but also adding a layer of financial complexity and utility on top of that, then now a log is, is the right solution, the right tool for you to do so. Um, we will be uh, launching also um, some some campaigns to celebrate and incentivize the, the usage of, of the platform. Um, so you will be able to uh, and some juicy prices, some tokenized luxury watches, for example, that again, you will be able also to use as collateral for instant loans. So, so you were really excited about the product we're launching tomorrow. We are really proud of it. And I think it's one of the, um, one of the key pieces that the, that the ecosystem is, is lacking right now. And that's going to unlock the full value and the full utility of the whole RWA ecosystem. So thank you guys for, for, for inviting us today. And I'm really excited about what you guys are building and what the uh, entire RWA industry is heading to. And uh, thank you, Gene, for, for uh, this opportunity. And uh, um, we are uh, in, in Testnet. Uh, we have a, a program for uh, early adopters, uh, application developers. We're a B2B2C project so uh, any application developers uh, that uh, are willing to uh, benefit from the uh, 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 Kima advantages uh, in the RWA space uh, uh, that require interoperability that need uh, to obstruct the uh, fragmentation um, that is uh, uh, something that we're willing to work with uh, such uh, developers and uh, uh, entrepreneurs so uh, we have a grant program we have a um, an ongoing program to onboard a new uh, uh, project so uh, uh, please reach out to us uh, and uh, we'll happy we'll be happy to onboard you and uh, thank you uh, Gene again and uh, the entire panel uh, I, I personally learned a lot here yep would like to thank you you guys for having me on the panel again here. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, we did the grand opening to advise uh, one of the issuers in Thailand 
uh, to open the music decentralized platform uh, by tokenizing the music NFT to the an artist, and this already opening. So uh, the platform is trying to create uh, the creators' economies in Thailand. I'm sure it's not new. It, it's the same technology like uh, five years ago when uh, Snoop Dogg or famous artists uh, organized them in terms of music. But uh, in Thailand, we are uh, we, 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 we are quite uh, luckier uh, than them. So uh, I think there's new it uh, high like uh, initiatives uh, for the artists and a platform like this. And the music NFT uh, will be our use cases to develop uh, in the next few years. Also, uh, we are trying to sourcing like a good use case on the RWAs to advise and to uh, to, to do the ICO deals, for example, uh, like an ESG and carbon credits that I have mentioned, I think there will be many, many opportunities uh, about this field in Thailand during the next five years. Also, the soft power in Thailand, for example, is quite popular in South Korea, in Japan. Uh, I think our government would like to promote the soft power and to integrate them uh, to the technology of blockchain which we think a tokenization could be adopted uh, in, in this field also. I think we are trying to double or triple our tokenized asset in our platform on the next few years. And yeah, let's see for the good use cases of other uh, we'll be making. Thank you, everyone. All right, thank you, panelists. And for everyone joining in today, you know, as Yuen always says, you can always try out these platforms. You'll test them out. You have nothing to lose. And RWA Space is the one that's upcoming and it will be here for a while. So with that being said, thank you, our, thank you to our panelists for joining us again today. And for our Zili Sprinters, the password for tonight is tokenization. All right, everyone, have a good evening, good day, and uh, enjoy yourselves.